So today I'm going to be starting out a small video series about how to set up an electronics engineering lab. So I figured where better else to start than the actual staple of electronics design, the power supply. So let's get into it. So the reason why I refer to the power supply as the staple of electronics design is it powers the things we want to power. It makes things able to be interesting. I mean an LED is useless without power. So that's why I decided to start this video on the power supply as I find it's a really underestimated essential part of the lab. And it doesn't have to be a complex elaborate one. I mean it can be a basic unit as long as it does the function you need it to do. Now a power supply is sort of a regular name as it actually doesn't provide power like a battery which uses a chemical reaction to actually generate a constant voltage. What a power supply does is takes an alternating current and transfers it into a DC voltage which we can use for electronic design. In this video I'm not going to cover actually how to build a power supply but I will post a link of uh, the design process of how to design a power supply. So what I want to just go into now is what a power supply needs to achieve the status of a power supply. So originally what happens is the power going into the power supply looks like this, which is an alternating current, which is positive and negative. But we want to achieve a DC feature. So how we do this is we take a transformer, some diodes, a capacitor, several if needed, um, a voltage regulator, which is a complex array of transistors to achieve a constant voltage, and a potentiometer if you want to have a variable voltage source. So after all those components are properly compiled, your source should alternate into a constant DC voltage like we see here. Though I highly recommend building your own power supply to actually have an understanding of how this is achieved, eventually you're going to need a more involved power supply. And this is what I suggest you look for in a power supply. The first feature is a load switch, which basically means you have the ability to turn on and off your circuit independent of turning off and on the actual power supply. It's a very mild feature, but it does go a long way. Now the next thing I'd suggest is, instead of having a coarse and a fine adjustment for tuning your voltages, I'd recommend having a multi-turned potentiometer. This one right here is a 10-turn pot, so it really allows you to finely tune your voltage to what you need it to be. So that's a really nice feature. Now the next feature that I really would like most uh, good power supplies to have when I'm purchasing one is meters built in. Now they don't have to be you know beautiful LED displays or anything like that you can just have a simple analog one but it's a really nice feature especially for the current. So that's one feature I'd really look for in a power supply you plan to buy. And the next thing that's sort of really overlooked a lot is this feature right here and this is the earth ground. So basically what this allows you to do is have a completely isolated power supply from the things you're actually working and just go right into your earth ground. So it's a really nice feature and it does go a long way. Now another thing I like is when it has a constant voltage or a constant current supply and that goes a long way too. Now there's a lot of other features you can get in a power supply like span where you're able to set the minimal and maximum power supply voltages for a product that you're working on and there's tracking and independent sources and stuff like that. But right now, I just think you should focus on the basic ones. So your load switches, your multi-turn adjustments, your built-in meters for voltage and current, your earth ground, and your adjustable current supply. Now the other feature I forgot to mention was a dual channel power supply. And now the reason why I recommend that is to actually power up op amps um, because they have two polarities usually to get high sound quality or good uh, signal quality. So that really allows you to really further develop your electronic designs. So that's one feature that I would say is not to be overlooked. It's crucially essential. So other than that, those are the main features you should look for when you're actually purchasing a power supply. And this concludes our first video for designing electronics lab. And uh, hopefully you got something from this. If you have any questions, please post it in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day.